morning, everybody, and welcome to the Houston Easton Chamber of Commerce Construction and Government Contracting Panel Discussion. This is the culmination of our four workshop series moderated by Julie Irvin Hartman and Susan Repka. It is a great honor to see so many people return to this panel discussion who are part of all of our workshop series. So thank you so much. Hopefully you have learned a lot of information to become certified and bid on some of their upcoming projects. Today would not be possible without our sponsors and we are grateful to our title sponsor, Houston Community College Procurement Small Business Development. And we thank Veronica Douglas for her leadership and sponsorship. Today we have Christopher Burton of HCC who is a panelist, but will also give some opening remarks. Good morning, Christopher. Good morning. Uh, good morning, attendees. Uh, thank you so much, East End Chamber, for having us today. My name is Christopher Burton, and I, and I am representing Houston Community College System, one of the largest college systems in the country, and our small business development program. Um, we, we are uh, very honored to be here today and to be a sponsor. And uh, I just wanted to highlight the good work that my colleague, Ms. Uh, Veronica Douglas does in the uh, Houston community, uh, doing outreach and uh, helping our small and diverse businesses to do business with Houston, not only Houston Community College, but other governmental entities. Um, we have an annual expo um, that we hope you'll look into uh, that's posted online on uh, YouTube. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more about HCC, you can go to YouTube and uh, Google the Houston Community College Expo and learn more. So thank you so much for letting us uh, present today and be a part of this, uh, this panel. And uh, I expect us to do some, some wonderful things and sharing a lot of good information today. So thank you. Thank you so much, Christopher. And we'll find that link to the HCC um, event and put it in the chat room while, while this program is going on. But we also want to thank our gold sponsors, Manhattan Construction and Block Companies. Without their support, this wouldn't be here possible. And we're just so grateful for their participation. We're also going to include links to their websites in the chat room. And last but not least, we want to thank our individual sponsors, RDLR, whose offices are here in the East End. There's a, it's an amazing architectural firm. And then also Lift Fund. Thank you both so much for all that you do for our community. At the Houston Easton Chamber of Commerce, our mission is to connect businesses to promote economic expansion and investment here in the East End. And we are so proud to connect with Julie Irvine and Susan Repka, experts in helping you with construction and government contracting. As we slowly get back into in-person meetings, we wanna make sure that you take advantage of this, this opportunity to network in the chat room, make sure that you put your questions and just reach out to some of the speakers that are here today. It's gonna to be very important for us to get back to near normal. And now it is my honor to introduce you to Susan Repka, President, SMR Business Services, and Julie Hartman, Certified Proposal Manager. Thank you so much, ladies. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks so much, Francis. It's been an honor and a pleasure uh, to be facilitating this entire series, as well as the panel that we're ending on today with these six amazing industry leaders and people that are actually making a whole lot of things happen within Houston. We've got today uh, a lot, a lot, a lot planned and we've got it grouped in three different chunks. So we'll start off first with the University of Houston and Manhattan Construction Group. Then we'll open it up for a question and answer period. So please raise your hand in the chat. Um, and then we'll repeat your question and then open up the microphones for the panelists. Our intent today is to make this as open, interactive, and engaging as possible. So we are looking to each and every one of you participants to make that happen. Then we're going to uh, start the second part of today's panel discussion with Houston Community College and Telepson. Open it up once again for a question and answer period. And our third and closing group is UT Health and the Henshaw Group with the final Q&A. Then we'll turn it back over to Francis and closing thoughts from the chamber. Susan and I wanna continue the conversation with each and every one of you. And we have our contact information here. And we thank you for your 90 minutes today. But in order to capitalize on your time today and all of the great knowledge that these panelists are gonna be sharing with you, it's critical to have an action plan. So get your coffee ready, get your notepad ready, open up your computer 
and get ready to take a ton of notes and change the trajectory, not only as you, as small businesses within the community, but as trajectories within your own companies. Our first speaker today is Dr. Linnell Clark, the director of the Hub Operations Program with the University of Houston. Please welcome Dr. Clark. Thank you. So I'm going to share my screen. And Okay, so moving from the title. The first thing that I wanted everyone to, to know is that the, the HUB program, we have 24 colleges that we're supporting, 24 colleges and divisions that make um, uh, individual pro procurements as well as each one of the colleges has a HUB uh, utilization goal. So these are the colleges that I'm responsible for, for looking at to make certain regarding missed opportunities. Brandon Davis is the senior hub specialist and my primary contact for construction projects. Along with Shalana Williams, who handles our B2G program, which is used to, for construction, capturing construction information and data. Unlike the other colleges where I've assigned um, different goals to try to get them to what will meet um, the state requirements. The goals for construction, we follow the same um, goals that are assigned by the comptroller's office. So this is the uh, copy of the information that was submitted and, and is on the comptroller's website as far as our semi-annual semi report in terms of what we've attained to date. And as you can see, there is definitely um, some room for improvement. And uh, to let everyone know, a copy of these slides will be made available after the presentations. These next several slides will um, just give you an idea in terms of some of our new construction projects. This is um, in no way representative of all of our projects, but basically the new ones and as well as some that are projected to, to start. So this gives you an idea of what are the types of projects and who are the prime contractors that have, um, who are working on these projects for us. We also had um, consultant continuing service agreements with construction materials testing um, for uh, Terracon consultants and professional serv service industries were the primes for those and they're not shown here. For, we have a science building landscape renovations project that's going to be coming up and then um, the Worthing landscaping as well as some other projects are already posted, anything 25,000 and above, it's definitely posted on the ESBD. So please uh, check the ESBD and our agency number is 730. On our website, there's additional information about we have a hub vendor database. This is important for those who, especially who are interested in doing projects directly with U of H in the um, maintenance side, facilities and maintenance, some of our smaller projects. Our project managers will refer to our internal hub database to identify vendors for these projects, as well as I will make certain that when I become aware of projects that may be of interest, that I send those to you as early as possible so that you can put it on your calendar if you're interested in pursuing those opportunities. Our website, please check out our website. There's a lot of information there. I send out to our construction in all of our hubs, uh, what we call our Did You Know newsletter. That letter contains information, especially one of, one of the articles that we covered was some of the lessons learned or feedback regarding when you um, do presentations, when you're shortlisted, some common errors or mistakes that people are, that I see that people may be making. We also had a matchmaking event, and that's what I, for the construction area, I called it um, ready, willing, and able. And that was so important in terms of trying to establish 
an opportunity or venue for prime contractors to meet others, um, meet hubs that they may not be aware of that other prime contractors are using. For example, uh, for that event, myself and several UT Austin, UT um, Systems, and uh, uh, UT um, A&M all participated and we all brought prime contractors to the tables that we were working with or have worked with. And those prime contractors brought a hub, a hub that they have worked with and then the hub invited a guest. And we did a round robin and breakout rooms where there was an opportunity for some more in-depth conversation to start the relationship building. Because as we know, people like to do business with people that they feel they trust and people that they know. So how do we open that door or opportunity for hub contractors to meet hubs that they may not um, be familiar with, but who have proven themselves with other prime contractors. So I hope to, that was the first time we did that matchmaking event and I look forward to doing it again. Again, I mentioned about the proposal development and shortlist presentations. Again, that information was um, identified within our newsletter. The construction management talent pipeline program that was something new that we started as well with the idea that all hubs to try to create or facilitate an avenue for hubs that are interested in being primes. How do we, what are some of the skills that you may not be familiar with? How do we provide you with that opportunity? So our faculty with our, at the UH Construction Management Department um, helped create a short, um, uh, workshop or classes rather. And we held those in part, and I worked in partnership with NAMAC to help identify uh, hub, hubs that would be eligible to participate as well as my internal um, construction and management um, staff and prime contractors and others um, served in terms of providing uh, feedback and, and speak as guest speakers. So it was a very interactive, it was a uh, formatted classroom learning opportunity that again, this was the first time we tried this and hopefully we plan to continue this program. My department also provides HSP courtesy reviews. And then for non-construction, we do what I call um, targeted hub vendor fairs. And there, and again, on my website are additional information for resources. So it looks like I'm well within my time, but this slide also has my contact information as well as my staff information. So I will stop sharing screen right now. Thank you. Thank you so very, very much, Dr. Clark. And we have put Dr. Clark's bio in the chat as well as uh, the contact information that she had on her last slide. Uh, her slides will be sent to all of the uh, registrants after, after this session. Uh, so you'll get that email later today. Um, our next speaker is uh, Jason Fuller, Vice President for the Houston Division with Manhattan Construction. Welcome, 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 Jason. Thank you very much, Julie. And uh, thank you. Good morning to everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Fuller. I manage the Houston operations for Manhattan Construction Company. Uh, just thanks to the chamber, uh, I've gone back through the information that, that Julie and Susan put together. Uh, this has just really been an exceptional series, an exceptional resource, uh, and we're just thankful to be a part of it. So a little bit about Manhattan Construction Company. Uh, we've been operating in Houston continuously uh, for over 80 years now. Uh, we are a 125-year-old family company. Uh, actually, based out of Oklahoma originally, we're not from Manhattan, New York nor Manhattan, Kansas. I think we're actually so old. We're not exactly sure why we're called Manhattan Construction Company. Uh, but we, uh, we operate uh, in our regions, which are Houston, Dallas, Oklahoma, Washington, DC, Atlanta, and Florida. So as we share uh, our resources on how to work and how to uh, contact uh, and get pre qualified with Manhattan, if you've got any operations or folks that work in those regions, please uh, reach out to us as well. Uh, focused on Houston, uh, we, we have traditionally worked in many different market sectors here. 
a great deal of our work is municipal and government work. So, you know, fits in quite nicely with this series. Uh, City of Houston, Harris County uh, have been major clients of ours and we're actively working on numerous projects uh, for, for, for the city and the county. Uh, one that's coming up that we'll, uh, we'll be procuring over the next uh, six months will be up near Atascacita for Harris County for the CSCD uh, Atascacita Dual Diagnosis Residential Facility. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, we do a lot of aviation work uh, with HAS. We've been operating at uh, Bush Intercontinental Airport for over 25 years. Uh, we've got several projects going there for United, uh, as well as reconfiguring the checkpoints in Terminal C. Uh, so we're very proud of that relationship uh, with HAS. Uh, education uh, is a big uh, part of our business as well. We've, I'm proud to say we've done work with two of our panelists here, both U of H and HCC recently. Uh, uh, active projects at, at Texas A&M. We also do a, a bit of uh, select K through 12 work. We've actually got a project bidding next week uh, that may interest some of y'all uh, that I'll point you to on Building Connected. Uh, also known for sports and healthcare. Uh, a lot of the work we do in town is more, some of the more uh, technically complex uh, work. That's what we, uh, we tend to get into some of the difficult jobs. Uh, and really on the east end, uh, we've got a couple landmarks. Uh, Dynamo Stadium uh, we built a number of years ago, and we're also proud of a project we did for the county on, at 5900 Canal. That's the offices of uh, both Constable Trevino and the district clerk. That was the old uh, Continental Can Company that we worked uh, with Kirksey and the county to convert uh, to offices. That's where the, uh, it was kind of fun. We were able to help Kirksey and uh, Gonzo 247 when they reworked uh, the reverse of the nationality mural there. Uh, so that's a project we're very proud of. So most of our work here is government contracting. Uh, probably 80% of our Houston business is municipal work we do. Uh, in D.C., we do a lot of federal work, not so much here. It's mostly municipal. Uh, and part of that is, you know, one of our major focuses here in pre-con in our office is working with small and uh, diverse minority businesses. Uh, Lael Ellis uh, leads our program. Um, she leads our outreach. She collaborates with our pre-con team that's led by Raylena Browning, who is our pre-construction director. And really, it's a focus of all of us, from, from my seat as vice president all the way down to operations. Uh, of, of helping uh, mentor, bring on small businesses and really help uh, you folks survive, or, you know, thrive and, and build your business. Um, we average about 25% to 40 uh, small uh, MWSBE on all of our projects, regardless if there's a program or not. That's something we take pride in. Uh, because really as a construction manager, uh, you know, traditionally we had self-performed quite a bit of work, you know, back through 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, that's changed a bit. You know, Houston has a very wide range of trade contractors. We do sell, perform some work, but the bulk of our work is done by you, by trade partners and contractors such as yourself. You know, our main task for an owner, especially a public owner, any, any public private entity, anyone that's gonna build a project is for us to dig in and build the best team of contractors at that specific period of time for that specific project, right? And that takes the resources uh, of contractors like you. Uh, you know, all contracting is tricky. There's a lot of risk points, government contracts is especially so. There's a lot of uh, extra, um, sometimes extra paperwork, extra uh, things that you have to do. Uh, it keeps some people away, but those, those of you that can take the extra effort and use the resources that this series has provided, you can definitely, you can thrive. Uh, so as, as being a contractor that does a lot of that, we take pride in, in, in helping provide resources where needed. You know, a lot of times uh, some resources or a little assistance with things like insurance, uh, bonding resources, safety, financial capabilities. You know, obviously as we go through our pre-qualification process, um, we want to help partners like you uh, find those resources, grow your business, uh, and, and thrive. The, you know, the more resources that we have from a trade contractor perspective, the better off we all are, not only from, from us as the general contractor to the owners, to the entire community. Uh, and that's what we're, we want to help to do. So, uh, you know, how can you work with us? I think uh, we've got all of the information I think has been shared uh, on the chat. Um, 
on our manhattanconstructiongroup.com or manhattanconstruction.com website, there is a trade partner platform. Um, if you are not set up as a vendor, uh, there is a short form that will get uh, that information. If you click what region that you do work in, if you click Houston, that goes to Melissa Boyd, who's a, a couple offices away from me. She gets that information. She'll reach out to you and give you a packet of information to get pre-qualification. Uh, put all your information in there and start that process. And then uh, you will start. Uh, we've got also another uh, portion of the website that has our live uh, online plan room, which is Building Connected. Uh, you can see those uh, opportunities across the company, but just reach out to uh, myself, reach out to uh, Raylena Browning, reach out to you know anyone on our office, uh, and we will get you, uh, get you set up as a vendor and get you into those opportunities. So again, Appreciate the, appreciate the time. Thanks for being here. Uh, and I'll turn it back over to Julie. Thanks, Jason. We put uh, the link for Manhattan's uh, website as well as the email address and, and Melissa and the entire team at Manhattan is phenomenal. And any question that you have, uh, they will walk you through it and are dedicated to having you start off on, on the, the size of project that is appropriate for your company, your skill set, your capacity, as well as your capabilities. So we're going to open up for our first question and answer period. Um, um, David Delaney has a question in the chat. Okay, David. Yes, we'll take your question first. So David's question is, what's Manhattan's position on joint venture opportunities with minority prime general contractors on large projects with municipalities, airports, universities, and et cetera. So we'll turn that um, right over to you, Jason. Yeah, well, thanks for the question, David. That's a great one. Um, we do it all the time. Um, we are actively in joint ventures for several uh, aviation projects right now. Actually, Lael, I mentioned Lael Ellis. Uh, she is actually getting ready for a uh, online presentation for a very large project at DFW that we have several uh, joint venture partners. So um, yes, that is, that's uh, typically something that's done and something we've done for many years. Um, and I would uh, just reach out, uh, reach out to me with your information. Would love to meet you and talk about uh, some potentials there. Yeah, mute Julie. Next question, um, is Manhattan affiliated with any labor organizations or unions? Back to you. Uh, we, uh, we typically uh, partner in our markets uh, with organizations and unions. Uh, it, it depends on the market, right? But uh, that's something that we traditionally have done over time. So yes, specific to projects and specific to regions. There was a question uh, that was previously asked, um, and we'll take this to you, Dr. Clark, regarding uh, U of H in the hub certification, which is a state certification, um, and wanted to just give you the, the floor to make sure that we answered that question appropriately, and if you wanted to elaborate a little bit more on the hub certification that U of H accepts. Yes, thank you. Uh, the University of Houston, just so that people know, we are a state agency. So in order for us, um, so which means that we have hub requirements and to meet those hub requirements, not only does the, um, we have to work with hubs, you have to be certified by the state of Texas as a historically unutilized business, but also you have to, we have to, you have to be paid and it has to be documented within a certain period of time for us to even get the credit. And all, and all of that information is covered in the Did You Know newsletter, as well as we send reminders to people. And then again, a quick reminder, if you're interested in doing projects, uh, work on our maintenance projects, the best way for us to know about you is to establish a vendor profile that is specific to the UH Hub vendor database. Again, that information is available on the UH website. So we do not, basically, we do not accept other certifications other than the state of Texas Hub certification. Thank you so much, Dr. Clark, for the clarification. Uh, we have a question from Tanika, brand rebirth sells promotional products. Is there 
excuse me, are there opportunities with Manhattan construction? Should I complete the trade partners vendor information? That's a, that's a great question. So uh, for, so that's reach out to us directly um, because when you complete the, uh, the trade partners vendor information, that is really information uh, related to folks that we would subcontract with. So it's got financial information, it's got bonding capacity. Uh, so your product is something that we do use, right? We've got a topping out event you know, next week for uh, a project uh, for the city of Houston that we use promotional projects for, but that would be a open purchase uh, item. So why don't you just reach out directly to us uh, you can send me an email or send an email through, um, through that, but I would not, uh, since you're not going to be contracting, that would be open purchase. You don't, you do not need to go through that, uh, prequal process. Thanks. That's, that's a, that's a great question. Um, because we do have some people on, on here that are not, that support, support construction, but are not, you know, wouldn't be directly, um, on site. And we're also going to put Melissa's, uh, contact information in the chat. Uh, continuing in our certification world, we have a question from Victoria. Does Manhattan accept Metro SBE certification? Well, that's a great question as well. So that is a project by project uh, basis. That depends on the contracting entity uh, that we are that is the that we are building a project for, right? So, um, for example, when we build projects uh, at U of H, um, that would be. Uh, in line with the program that, that Dr. Clark prescribed. That's what we are implementing. Uh, if we do a project for the city, it's through the city OBO. You know, the county now has their uh, Office of Economic Opportunity, so they've got their own program. So that, that is a, uh, we abide by the program that, uh, that the owner of the project uh, sets. Uh, we have time uh, for one more question before we open it up uh, for Houston Community College. Does anyone else have a final question? Oh, here's one in the Q and A. Okay. Um, here, let me just I'm gonna copy it to the chat. Okay, we've got one more question coming through. All right, we have a question. Uh, with Biden's push for the infrastructure bill, how do you foresee this impacting the construction industry market specifically in Houston? I think it's gonna be very positive. I think most of the owners that we're talking to are um, as a contact at the airport said, they're uh, getting their shopping cart out. They're just trying to figure out what their shopping list is. Uh, so most entities that we see uh, from our side, and I can let the other panelists jump in if, they're, if they've got some info, is, is that they know it's coming. Um, they are making efforts to, uh, to exactly find out what the process is to go get that grant money. But especially in the aviation industry uh, and some of those other sectors that uh, it's coming, it's just going to take a little while for that process to come through and the money to, uh, to land. Thanks. Thank you so much, Dr. Clark and um, and Jason. Um, all right, uh, David, we're going to actually save your question that you just put in the chat uh, in, for the next grouping, um, if you're okay uh, with with that due, due to time constraints. Um, or if, um, Jason, you want to respond to David and Victoria um, in, in the chat. All righty, um, our next speaker and panelist uh, is Christopher Burton. He is the Director of Procurement Operations for the Houston Community College District. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, great to be here today. Uh, it's a great day at Houston Community College. Uh, not unlike our, uh, our colleagues, uh, government colleagues here in the city of Houston, we're opening things up and a lot of activities going on around um, our buildings um, and so and a lot of activity in support of uh, student success so great to be here um, want to uh, I guess highlight our program so we're we are not a state agency 
And so we have other statutes that we have to follow. And our program is a, our, our program is called the Small Business Development Program. And it, it is managed by uh, Ms. Veronica Douglas, who couldn't be here today. So I'm, I'm supporting her. Um, and uh, most of you that have uh, worked within diversity here in the local um, community, you know Veronica, she's out and about and she is a, a mover and a shaker. Uh, and a huge proponent for small businesses. And we work very closely together uh, with Veronica, with our strategic sourcing partners to identify small business, certified small businesses every day. Uh, we want to do business with you. We are, we are, um, we have a policy that uh, enables us and uh, uh, we are seeking to do business with you. So we do not certify. So that's a really important, I think, distinction to make. We do not certify you as a small business. There are a number of certifications that we accept, uh, including Metro's certification, which we, we are a very close partner with Metro and we do a lot of outreach events with them. Uh, the city's certification as well. Uh, the SBE, MBE, WBE, uh, PDBE, and DBE are all accepted. Um, so within our construction projects, um, we have a 35% uh, goal for certified small businesses. So um, there is typically, um, there are typically points added to uh, an RFP when we do an RFP for a construction project related to meeting or exceeding the goal. Um, and so uh, we are uh, very proud of uh, our, uh, our uh, past performance in meeting this goal of 35% uh, total spend with small certified small businesses. Um, we are uh, we do an annual expo uh, for our our certified small businesses and diverse businesses. Uh, this year it was a virtual expo, and uh, we had a great um, we had a great presenter keynote speaker. Speaker was uh, Mario Ellie, who is a Houston Rocket uh, great, uh, and we really appreciate appreciated his kind words about Houston Community College and the work that we're doing in this space. Uh, I also did a presentation called um, uh, You Want to Sell to Government, uh, What's Next, um, Small Business. And uh, so if you're interested in uh, checking that out and learning more about Houston Community College, feel free to look at the, the YouTube. Uh, it's posted to YouTube and you can check out our event this year that was virtual. Uh, of course, going forward uh, next March, we look forward to, to having an event in, um, on campus. And typically we have uh, a lot of partners from government that participate in that event as well. So um, we are out and about looking for uh, folks, helping folks figure out if there's opportunities with HCC. And if there, there aren't opportunities with HCC, we, we really try to help um, small businesses and diverse businesses um, we, we help them and, and educate them and kind of point them in the right direction. Um, so it's, it's a pleasure to, to be in this space. I really enjoy this work. I've been doing this, this type of work, helping small businesses and diverse businesses for about 20 years. And uh, we're, we're in it to win it. Um, and uh, I, I really do appreciate being here today. We have a couple of procurements coming up that kind of fall within our facilities. Um, construction uh, type uh, procurements. So we have a new technicians high wire training facility at our Northeast campus that's going to be posted very soon. We post uh, our opportunities that are $50,000 or greater to our website under our procurement website, as well as e uh, ESBD, Electronic State Business Daily, uh, which is essentially the state's uh, primary uh, posting uh, platform for government uh, procurement. We also have a collaboration room construction 
that's going to be hitting the, the market very soon for our Northeast campus. And uh, as I stated, there's going to be small business uh, goals posted for those, those projects. Typically 35% is our goal for small business participation. Um, I, uh, again, if you have any questions about our program, if you just Google our program, you can get a wealth of information. Um, you can sign up for um, a, uh, an email distribution list so that you can get a lot of information. Uh, we, we recommend if you're interested in doing business with HCC to register um, as a bidder with HCC on our website. Um, we use the CMBL, but um, we're not uh, statutorily mandated to use it. So we, uh, like several other governmental entities, have our own registration, uh, bidders registration to, to pull bidders lists. So I recommend if you're interested in doing business with us to register on our website. And uh, again, uh, we're, we're in it to win it. We're in it to help you. If, we, we're, if we're, we can't purchase from you or we don't buy what you sell, we'll definitely point you in the right direction. So um, open to any questions um, and uh, really appreciate uh, the East Ends uh, Chamber's opportunity today to, to present to you, to talk to you a little bit about Houston Community College, one of the largest uh, college systems in the country. Thanks, thanks so much, Christopher. And Susan is putting in uh, the chat the link for HCC's procurement department. So you can go ahead and register. They also have a great newsletter that, that you can sign up to and they offer different sessions, different educational opportunities and their buyers are extremely helpful to answer any questions that, that you might have on, um, on anything. Um, and all of the great different things that HCC uh, purchases. We're going to transition next to Paul Bain, who is an estimator uh, with Talipson. Welcome, Paul. Thank you, Julie. It's good to be back. This is an exciting webinar. Very, very encouraging for the work that you all are doing to foster small business growth here in the Houston area. Uh, you know, growth is challenging, as uh, several of the other participants had mentioned. You have to learn how to go through the right door and fill out the right paperwork. And so much of that often seems concealed from uh, the, the, the aspiring subcontractor. And I am just so excited to be a part of this webinar series that really helps pull back the curtain uh, and gives, as you said, an action plan step by step to uh, to gain success with uh, the prime contractors in the area uh, and, and ultimately for the owners in the area. Uh, as you said, my name is Paul Bain. I work as an estimator at Telepson. Estimators lead the pre-construction charge for Telepson. So I am actually the primary point of contact for our aspiring subcontractors today on the call uh, when they uh, want to do business with Telepson, uh, building relationships, building partnerships, and finding the right opportunity for them to have success and growing success with Telepson. So it is exciting to be uh, on the call today. Thank you very much. Uh, Telepson has been around 112 years in the Houston area. We are a fourth generation family owned company operating only in the Houston area. We go as far south as Galveston and as far north as A&M, uh, east to Baytown and west to Katy. Uh, and with that comes great responsibility. Uh, our, our family has longstanding relationships with the prolific builders in Houston and our unique service proposition centers around the pre-construction effort. So when uh, someone who builds many buildings in the city wants to build a new one, uh, they often reach out to Telepson long before they contact the architect and, and begin to talk about what that might cost, uh, what does it look like in today's market, and begin to get advice from the 12 uh, folks on our pre-construction team. Uh, and that's a weighty responsibility. Uh, we work for many, uh, if not most, of the prolific builders in the city. Uh, my, my esteemed counterparts from the University of Houston uh, and Houston Community College on the on the call today, we have long-standing relationships that go back decades with both of those entities. We're on both of those campuses right now, and I myself have done work 
uh, on uh, for both campuses, and it's a tremendous opportunity to uh, to get to build uh, with these entities and be a part of their mission. Uh, really, at the end of the day, it's about the people that use the buildings and the people that build them. Uh, and Telips really functions just as a conduit to connect all of you on the phone looking to do great work in the city, uh, to put that great work to use in a project of significance uh, for the, the people of the city. And that's very exciting. Uh, Telips builds in a variety of markets, most markets in the city. Uh, we focus on what we call projects of significance. So certainly we look for uh, any and all opportunities. We entertain any and all calls, but we're really looking to leverage our longstanding history in the city, our subcontractor relationships um, and our buying power to see a unique vision come to life. And so that often translates to community projects. Um, we're right now out at the zoo. Uh, we, we had the opportunity to participate in their uh, centennial project and do quite a bit of work out there and give all subcontractors an opportunity to participate in that project where you're going to take your kids and tour the zoo after the fact and look at it and say, hey, I did, I did that. I was a part of this uh, stamp on the city. Uh, we often do nonprofit, many of the nonprofits that you see functioning in the city who have just a few dollars to spend. Uh, we help them stretch those dollars uh, as wisely and as broadly as possible to, to foster their mission. We build uh, for many of the independent school districts in the area uh, and have really enjoyed those projects. Again, tremendous impact on the students in the city seeing folks grow. And as they grow on up into the higher education, we have the uh, great opportunity to build on many of the higher education campuses in the city and see uh, that education be offered uh, right here uh, in Houston. What a tremendous uh, impact. And then as things, uh, as we grow even older, we, we have opportunity to participate in the healthcare industry here in the city and have a, have a lasting mark uh, going all the way back to uh, the first hospitals built in the medical center uh, many years ago on through the hospitals being built today. Uh, we have several hospital projects in pre-construction pre right now. And so as you can see, we have a broad uh, impact in the city. In addition, we also do quite a bit of office work. Uh, I have a mixed use development project in uh, the heights right now that I'm that I'm working on as well. So we have a broad range here in the city. We're very fortunate to be able to do all of our business uh, here in the city that we love so much. And we really bear uh, that role and responsibility as curators of the city's built environment. Um, when I drive around the city that I grew up in, I'm, I love to to see the lasting impact that Tellepson has had uh, on this city that we love so much. And you know, with that responsibility comes great responsibility to foster subcontractor relationships. That's why a call like this is so incredibly important uh, to me and to our company as a whole, uh, because as I said, we, we function just as a conduit for these opportunities for all of you. And so as we uh, foster relationships in the Houston market over, uh, over decades, uh, our goal is to constantly uh, foster new talent uh, and partner with you our opportunity to do that really lies in two strengths that we offer you. And we've been on the call now two times uh, before in this webinar to, uh, to share some of that with you. And I'll state those again now. The first is our pre-qualification process. And, and uh, I know my counterpart at Manhattan talked about pre-qualification and how important it is as well. Um, you know, this really, it, it can seem like a barrier to entry, but it really is about protection of the subcontractor. I, we work in your best interest. Um, to, to ensure that, that you have the financial capacity to do the job, um, to, to ensure that you're spread out over multiple prime contractors and that not all of your eggs are in one basket, and to ensure that um, you, have, you have the proper safety protocols in place to be successful on a job because, gosh, running out of money or having a significant accident can end your business quicker than anything else in this industry, and people have long memories. And so uh, as a prime contractor, we want to function in responsibility for you uh, to protect you in that. That said, uh, that might be frustrating uh, as a barrier to entry, but we wanna underline the fact that our safety team uh, that we keep on staff as well as our, our pre-qualification team uh, want to work with you. Let's have a meeting, let's get you into the office after you go through the pre-qualification process, understand where you stand today and how we can help you foster your systems, grow your systems, uh, to see you expand your impact uh, in the Houston market. We want long-term partners 
uh, at Tellepson and we want to foster growth in the city. So it's not just the pre-qualification process. Uh, you turn in your forms and you get a readout on what size projects you can do with us and that's it. Uh, we want to encourage you to take the next step, reach out to us, let's have a meeting and find out what you can do uh, to grow your program and let's form a strategic partnership over time. In addition to that, the pre-construction process, uh, Telepson is a, what they call a construction manager at risk. Many of you are no doubt familiar with this. 99% uh, of our business, we are signed up at the same time that the architect is signed up. So instead of functioning in a hard bid environment where we have one uh, opportunity uh, to, to, to take numbers and those numbers are either successful or unsuccessful, uh, we partner with the owner and the architect over a long period of time to develop the project. And as we do that, we rely heavily on our subcontractor expertise, which is important to you. You're likely in this business uh, because you are an expert. You are a technician that has been so successful that you're forming your own business. So I see we're just about out of time. The goal is, is to, uh, to participate in the process with us in pre-construction. We wanna find the right opportunities for you to be successful on and partner together. So I hope you'll reach out to me after the fact and thank you again. Tellepson has been in the East End um, since inception and the founder of Tellepson actually um, took drafting classes at the YMCA. So if you need inspiration at all, if you can grow your capacity from a small business and do what, what truly can happen, um, Tellepson is definitely uh, an example of that. Uh, we'll open it up for questions and answers. Uh, we have a question here. As we know, the cost of construction has increased tremendously within the past year with the pandemic, specifically in lumber as an example. This has made the market extremely competitive. How have you been able to maintain competitiveness in the market and create profit within your company? And Paul, if you want to take that. Or Manhattan. <laughs> or, or Jason, either one of you. Or we can go Paul first and then and then we'll jump over to, to Jason. Yeah, I'd be glad to, to take a quick stab at it. You know, again, Telepson CMAR contractor. So we participate over, over the course of roughly 12 months on each project. And so we have projects that went on the shelf at the beginning of COVID last year that we're pulling off the shelf now. And the goal is for us to stretch the owner's dollar. And so instead of that hard bid, drawings are final, it costs what it costs. We wanna leverage our resources to help them get the most that they can for the dollars that they have. Uh, and so we have a lot of experience helping them cut where they need to cut, downsize, use alternate materials, use alternate subcontractors to get uh, the building built. And it's really important to get jobs to go right now so we can keep bread on people's tables. Jason, you want to jump yeah, in? Yeah, Paul's exactly right. I mean, what we've seen over the last three, four months has really been unprecedented uh, with the recovery of, uh, you know, kind of post-COVID, uh, a very sharp spike in really everything in the economy, everything that feeds construction from transportation to raw goods to commodities, uh, combined with a, a workforce that's uh, having, you know, just now kind of coming out of the coming out of the house, right? Um, uh, so just like Paul said, you know, Manhattan, we do. It's probably about eighty percent here, uh, construction manager at risk work with pre-construction services. We still do bid some work uh, that kind of keeps the sword sharp, but uh, it's the same thing. I mean, we've seen uh, just as quick as the uh, as the the market has recovered. Uh, there's been a little bit of concern that it's going to stifle itself out because of this uh, aggressive, uh, uh, you know, material and shortage of labor. We're starting to see some of that flatten. I think the, the index on lumber went down dramatically. I believe it was Tuesday. Uh, so we're starting to see some of that production hopefully uh, realign itself and correct itself. But it's just, you know, echo what Paul's saying. It's all about market timing. It's all about helping the owner uh, understand when to go get packages uh, early, you know, go buy things early that you've got to get in to keep the project moving, but maybe do some, uh, maybe defer some packages uh, a little down the line to see a little more market stability through the, through the summer. So it's a real deal. We're just, uh, every day is a new day. So. 
it's definitely been an adventure the last uh, 18 to 19 months. That's that's for sure for all of us. Uh, uh, another question, uh, seen Telepson's vehicle in Southern California. Is that the same company? Is that right? Well, no, no presence that I know of in Southern California. You know, the family is broad and, and industrious and they do uh, they do have several business interests. Uh, our industrial arm does travel nationally. And so that is entirely possible. But I can't put my finger on a Southern California project, uh, to my knowledge. If there was one, I might be tempted to be a part of it. <laughs> it would be great to be in California right now. Um, We've got a question regarding small projects. Um, understanding starting out with a new relationship with either Manhattan or Telepson, first project would probably be small, probably under $50,000. What is the best way to find these projects as well as perform on them? Jason, would you like to take this one first and I'll follow you? That works. Uh, so, you know, Paul put it pretty succinctly about the pre, uh, the pre qualification process, you know, not uh, being a barrier to entry, but just the same as your insurance requirements and all the things that we do as a safety net to, uh, to really support your business and to make sure that, that we're all going to be successful. Uh, but part of that pre qual process does, uh, you know, for us, and I'm sure uh, Telepson as well, uh, involves a, uh, a confidential review of, of your financials, right? Of, we ask for audited financial statements. And what that really gives us is, you know, how much working capital do you have in place? Uh, how much bonding capacity? And, and what is your capacity to take on any given project at any given time? So back to the question, there's no exact limit uh, on what a first project may be for any given subcontractor. A lot of that is a result and a function of that uh, that pre-qualification process that really tells you what your bandwidth is. Uh, we have done, uh, you know, so there, there's no set, um, you know, entry point project is $100,000 or below. That really depends on a, uh, on a robust uh, review of, of what you've got going on and, and our pre-construction department and our operations department. Uh, as we get to that point, we, you know, as we as we find the opportunities, you find it for us, which is on Building Connected or in one of our outreach uh, events or an event like this. Uh, you pursue it. You work with uh, with our pre-con team. Uh, they're really talking to you every day and going through the scope. We'll bring you in and interview you. And uh, it's it's really a working process that's tailored to each project and to each subcontractor uh, as we as we get to familiar with working as a team. I couldn't agree more. You know, if pre-qualification is the key that opens the door, uh, the next step is, is forming relationships with an advocate and Telepson and Manhattan both with an interest in fostering uh, business in the city. We want you to come through the door. Top of mind awareness, the squeaky wheel gets the attention. Uh, come through the door, introduce yourself, find an advocate to find the right project for you. I have folks contact me all the time, say we wanna do business with Tel Telepson if they make it successfully through the pre-qualification pre process, which sort of gauges their level of commitment to working with us, uh, then, then it's, an, it's on me to find the right project for them. And at Telepson, you know, our projects range in size from 3 million to 500 million. And so we have those starter projects. We build for the YMCA all around the city. Those are great starter projects. We build for small uh, community groups that need uh, a, a contractor with less overhead that's able to be more competitive on their prices. So, so come introduce yourself, go through the pre-qualification process and show your intention, uh, but take it that next step further, reach out uh, repetitively and, and challenge me to find the right project for you. Great. Thanks so much, Jason and, and Chris. Um, Christopher or Dr. Clark, would y'all like to um, answer this very similar question in regards to $50,000 non-construction projects? Um, how would someone find these opportunities with, with HCC? So we'll go to Christopher first and then Dr. Clark. Um, so, 
the smaller projects um, typically um, they pop up at HCC and usually time is of the essence. And much of the time we will utilize um, what's called a, a jock contractor that has a cooperative contract. Um, there's a number of local cooperatives that um, engage small businesses uh, for jock contracting. HGAC, Houston Galveston Area Council would be one of them. So I would really recommend anyone who's looking to kind of break into the business to look at the cooperatives, the local cooperatives as a possible uh, opportunity uh, for smaller projects. And the smaller projects, as, as everyone knows, leads to the bigger ones, right? So if you, if you build a resume of small projects uh, and you have an extremely happy owner, um, then you're building that resume to take on larger projects. And then that gets the attention of these uh, other larger general contractors. So you can, you can work as a, as a sub or you can continue to work as a prime for smaller opportunities. But um, under, under $50,000, we would, we would typically utilize a cooperative and that's not to say that we're just getting one bid. We're, we're pretty active and pretty cutting edge in how we deal with cooperatives. Typically we compete cooperatives. So there could be multiple um, general contractors on a cooperative and we would, we would engage them and, and, and compete directly. Um, and this uh, is, uh, it, help, it assists with agile procurement Sometimes an RFP can take upwards of, you know, two, three uh, months. And so when we, have to, when we have to be agile and quick, we use these cooperatives to, uh, for smaller projects. So that, that's kind of what we do. For the University of Houston, we recently awarded several job um, opportunity job contracts. Um, so what I would recommend is on a case by case basis, just reach out to me so that I can determine who was selected for um, that may be applicable for your particular area. Because for our smaller projects, um, those jobs are used for our maintenance. We, we don't use the cooperatives for that, um, unlike HCC. So we have those and then again for some of our projects, smaller um, needs. Again, their maintenance will, and facilities and maintenance will use the uh, vendor database. So again, it just depends on what type of service um, you provide. So I can best give you advice based on your particular business capabilities. So I would suggest you just reach out to me directly and we can work on something that makes sense and I'll let you know. Thanks everyone. I think we got comments from every single one of our panelists. We got comments on construction projects. We got comments on non-construction comment projects, question and answers on certification. So we are just working all, all angles and making sure that there is no rock uncovered. Our next panelist is Sean McGowan. He is the manager and Hub and Business Program with UT Health. Thanks again, Sean, for joining us. And you have the stage. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Sean. If you want to go ahead and turn on your video, that'd be great as well. Okay. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Okay, yeah, uh, my name is Sean McGowan. I'm the hub manager at UT Health. Uh, we only post opportunities on our website. Our website is uh, uth.edu, uth.edu. And so go there if you're looking for any type of opportunities. And then also... Um, if you want to reach out to me, my number is 979-777-0533.
979-777-0533. Now, a couple of things about UT Health. Um, we are the sixth largest med school in America. And so we, we do a lot of good work for us here in the community. We're also building a, um, a new behavioral health hospital. Um, a lot of people don't know, but we manage the uh, Harris County Psychiatric Center for, um, for the county. And so we currently have 220 beds at that facility. And so once we get the new facility up built, built our new behavioral health hospital, we'll have uh, over 450 beds available, which would be the largest behavioral health hospital uh, on any college campus in America. Now, we also are doing a big thing here. I'm pretty sure people heard about the news. It's called the TMC3 project. Uh, that's gonna be a, a deal between um, AM, uh, UT Health, and uh, MD Anderson. It's gonna be over there on OST and Berkner. And so uh, it's gonna be a big project. So keep your eyes out for that project. Also, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send Julie and, um, and Susan, uh, I mean, um, some information about how to, some upcoming projects from our, from our facilities group. Also, we have a, um, a thing I got for um, our buyers prepared for me to show you how the process works for other things besides construction. And so it's very informative. So I will be emailing Susan and uh, Julia information uh, later today. Um, currently, we have a building we're being built also in the Burtner um, OST area. Now, this project is being managed by um, TMC, the, the uh, Texas Medical Center. So with that being said, Vaughn Construction is the, is the GC on that project. And so if you're interested in that project, email me. and I'll put you in contact with the right folks over at, the, um, at TMC. Uh, let's see here. We're also going to build a brand new school of public health. It's going to be in the same area. This building will be hopefully be built sometime within the next fiscal year. We'll start building the next fiscal year. And we're looking at um, maybe a hundred million dollars for, for this new building. So that's be some more opportunities for our construction. And then we're also going to do a, um, oh, what's it called here? Oh, our JLC projects. We have tons of opportunities through our JLC um, um, vendor, which is Vaughn Construction. So if you want to be part of the JLC project here at, um, at UT Health, reach out to me and I'll put you in Vaughn Construction. Let's see here. My main goal is to focus on local hubs. And so we do a lot of business with a lot of local folks, but we also have contracts in place with hub vendors. And so we honor our contracts. So say for instance, stuff like, um, uh, lab supplies, med supplies, that's pretty much locked up because uh, we have a hubs that are doing that for us. We also have um, office supplies, which is also pretty much locked up because uh, we honor our contracts at UT Health. So with that being said, do anyone have any concerns or questions for how we do stuff at UT Health or what the process is? Thank you. Now we see you. Great. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm I'm at home working today, and so I'm not I'm not as um, advanced with this stuff here for our Zooms. Everybody else is, but um, sorry about the lighting issues, though. Thanks, Sean. We're all good. You got you've got some more minutes, so keep going. Okay. So another thing is, I'm going to have my um, April um, my hub vendor is going to be in April of of um, is coming up this year, and so if you're interested in being a vendor, a hub, now you got to be hub certified. If you're interested, um, please reach out to me. I have maybe like 25 tables. I will say 15 are already taken. So reach out to me if you, if you want to be a uh, participate in my vendor fair, which will be in April. It's going to be at, at our med school. Also, that'll be my last official function at UT Health. I plan to retire next year after 33 years of service with, this, with, this, with the state. So reach out to me if you want to be um, part of my vendor fair. And then also, what can I tell you guys? Um, as I said earlier, I'm going to email you guys a, um, a list of the upcoming projects, also a list of how, how to do business with UT Health. And again, as I said earlier, our, we only post on our website, which is uth.edu. So go there for any opportunity. If any questions, call me. I'm your number one advocate at UT Health. And um, 
Thanks again for having me here. Thank you, Sean. And as soon as we get all of that contact um, information regarding upcoming projects, the vendor fair, uh, we will definitely include that in the packet. We see a couple uh, questions popping up in the chat and we're going to go ahead and we'll, we'll answer those in the chat. And I'd like to introduce our next uh, panelist that we have with us today. Tony Henshaw is with the Henshaw Group. Take it away, Tony. Hi, good afternoon. I'm trying to get the uh, video to start, I believe. The host has stopped my video. Can you? Sean, if you want to stop your video. There we go, Tony. We can see you now. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good afternoon. And uh, and my name is Tony Hinshaw. And I want to thank the East End Chamber of Commerce for the opportunity to speak. After 27 years, I retired from the city of Houston. And uh, at the city, I work in public works and I manage public works and engineering, small business development program, where I created programs uh, as mid the buyers, small contract rotation, uh, design a mental project program. I was responsible for increasing public works, professional services from uh, struggling 15, 14%. Uh, year in, year in, year out to when I left to 49% uh, four consecutive years uh, before I left the department. So after living in the city of Houston, I started my own consulting, uh, take with me all those uh, lessons learned. I had a great opportunity in sitting down and meeting several uh, minority and small women owned businesses and, and had a chance to see some of those people that did it right, and some of those that struggled uh, in trying to uh, increase the capacity as business owners. So typically, everybody tells you to get certification. Great, 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 great suggestion. But what do you do with a certification next? What do you do next as a business owner? How do you do business, business with a government agency, uh, which I call, how do you market business to business, or how do you market business to government. And uh, I'm gonna share, I think I have a few minutes just to share with you. I don't have any projects to share with you, but I've had the chance to work as a consultant uh, since living in the city of Houston uh, with different uh, minority businesses and, and a whole lot with larger firm where I've done uh, business development, I've done uh, contract compliance work, and I've written a diversity inclusion management program for my clients. So. I'm more of the guy that knows where the body is buried. That's, that's the joke in the city uh, of Houston. But I can share with you what I can tell you when I was on the inside. And also I can share with you what I learned when I was on the inside and how to successfully uh, build a small or minority owned women business. One of the key things that has been said already by the esteemed panel members is regarding building a relationship. Nothing beats building relationship by none. The next thing is actually truly understanding how to network and manage your networking efforts. Uh, I, I see people that would, 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 would reach out to me when I was with the city and they couldn't even articulate to me very well what services that they, they provide. None of the advocates that you've talked to that are on this panel or some of the ones that, that are representing the, the larger agencies would agree with, would tell you this, that if you don't understand what you're selling, if you cannot articulate what you're selling, if you're selling to the wrong person, they, they don't have much time to spend with you. They'll take your business card, they'll walk away, and you think you've landed a connection, but actually you have not. You need to really understand what do you do? Are you an engineering company? Are you a supplier? Are you a construction company? Because people use construction as a generic or contract as a generic term, you need to be able to know where do you fall. We talk about pre, I've heard about pre-qualification. When do you need it? Do you need it all the time? Do you have a capability statement? 
when do you use that? Do you give that to a government agency or do you give that to a business when you're doing your B2B connection? So, so it's important to really have a strategy is where I'm going with my presentation is to have a strategy in understanding what you do, who should you market your service to at what time? So there's a new building being built and there's architecture services required. It's a government agency and you do party planning. Would you go out to that outreach event and hand out business cards and waste your time and your resources to chase down a project that has nothing to do with what you, what you do? Or have you strategically looked at it and you've de decided you would attend because you wanna target a particular person? Uh, when uh, Paul Bain was talking and I saw his title, The Estimator, I kind of smiled to myself and I said, and I'm gonna throw this out as a question to all the, all the attendees. If you walk into a room and you see the chairman of Telepson in the room and you see Paul Bain and your small framing company or you do a landscaping or your construction, what would you run to? What line would you get into? Is it Paul Bain's line to shake hands with Paul Bain and get his information? Or would you stand in line to see the chairman of uh, Telepson and take pictures with the chairman? Well, I, I give you the answer. Paul is who I want to go to because as the estimator, that's the most important person in that room. So this is some of the, just some of the things you have to understand in trying to grow the capacity of your business. Who do you target? What services do you provide? Should you even waste your time trying to target the government directly, which is business to government? Or should you spend your resources, your time doing business to business? Hardly do you see a government procurement come out buying steel, hardly. So if you're still supplier, you should be focusing all your energy in doing a business to business relationship building rather than the business to government as a small business owner because Hadley would they procure your items directly. So this is some of the things that, that and then also is, it's, it's, is, the, is the agency gonna use an RFP, RFQ, is it an invitation to bid? You need to really understand your, in, the industry that you're in. So when you do talk to, this, to the procurement officers, when you do talk to the estimator, you can very well articulate what you're looking for and you can earn the respect knowing very well that you know what you're talking about and you know your business. A good example is people in technology companies. So they will say, I'm in technology and they will leave all the heavy lifting to the procurement officer or to the advocate in the, in the minority uh, and the, in the hub, hub advocate or to the, to, the, uh, to, the, uh, to the construction company to figure out what type of technology are you in? Are you a supplier of, are you a supplier? Do you do professional services? Are you a design firm? Are you IT? What type of IT firm are you? If you can narrow it down and be able to articulate it quickly at the first handshake, what type of technology do you do? That is how to grow and get government contracts. And then the other key part that most, most people overlook, especially in construction. If you're a construction company, and I don't care what size you are, your goal is to increase your bonding capacity. If, if you're not bonded, your goal should be, how do I get bonded and how do I increase the bonding capacity? Do I know how to handle paperwork? The other participants on this panel will tell you, one of the things that makes a subcontractor stands out is a subcontractor understands the paperwork. Can you do certified payroll? Do you have your own employees? Do you self-perform? Do you have a payroll? Do you understand how, how, how to submit all the necessary paperwork for the city of Houston? Do you understand the pay or play program? Do you understand the reporting required for pay or play program? I I'm gonna take a chance and say this. There's some of the Manhattan and also Telepson will tell you that they are more interested in the paperwork because of the volume of paperwork they have to submit as contractors and also the, 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 the paperwork that the subcontractors must submit, that they will value you more first, I'm sorry, first as a, as, as a subcontractor than how great your work is. Are you bonded? 
Do you know? Do you do you know how to complete? Do you submit certified payroll? Do you know how to do certified payroll? Do, do you know? Do you know how to complete? Um, or you just mentioned it earlier. Both of you did mention it, but so all this is critical information that 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 you need to know to try to build your business and increase your capacity. It's all strategy, strategy, strategy. So I think I just saw the uh, the, the timer go off that my time is up. And uh, but lastly for me is how do you stay relevant? I know people come in and ask you and have great new ideas. The time it takes to change a spec, the time it takes to change a procurement method to fit the great new idea that you have. I don't think you have the time and the procurement officer doesn't have the time to change the entire procurement because you have a great idea. Stay relevant, stay within the scope of work and be able to build a relationship to market your business. I'll go ahead and yield and take questions, questions now. Tony, thank you so much. And it was when we, you know, we're, we're scheduling all of, of the industry experts and panelists putting you at the end um, was probably one of the smartest decisions I've made all month. Um, you really just took everything from all of our preceding panelists, as well as your, your personal and intimate knowledge with all of your years with the city of Houston, growing these programs and walking all of these different companies through um, the processes and being successful. So thank you so much for, for just wrapping it, wrapping it all up. I, I want to put like a big red bow on it. Uh, we're, we, we do have some, some closing questions that have come through um, as, as Tony was chatting. And this one particularly talks about kind of the future of, of the industry and, and how to get into it. Any advice for a recent college graduate? As a recent graduate myself and little experience in construction, one thing I've noticed with the construction industry is that experience has equal weight, if not more than a college degree. Would you attest to that? And what advice would you have in regards to a career in construction? Well, I, I uh, well, you said it, does experience have better value than a college degree? I don't wanna knock a college degree and, and all the hard work that goes into getting one, but yes, uh, experience is critical. I, my, my advice would be to work for someone to learn the trade and your, your college degree will give you an advantage, you know, in terms of trying to, to in terms of the paperwork and, and understanding the financials and be able to catch on. Uh, so some of the experiences that I have when I worked for the city were great contractors. I mean, they could, they could put together, they could, they could lay a break in their sleep, but they struggle with, with the paperwork that's required. They're struggling with the financials. They're not bonded because of all, they get overwhelmed by the financial records that they have to produce. So you have an advantage having a college degree and then go to construction. My advice would be get experience, get under somebody uh, that can mentor you and you can work and, and then use that advantage you have with a college degree uh, to get ahead. And, and Paul, uh, we'll, we'll pass that same exact question uh, to you. Any additional comments? Yeah, Tony, well said. Uh, most of your larger GCs are fostering relationships uh, with college graduates in, in an effort to grow their talent pipeline. Uh, I actually run Telepson's intern program where we're working with college students uh, to expand their experience um, with the intent to hire them long-term uh, based on their college degree. It is not a, a prerequisite though. You can come up through the field, uh, growing your experience and, and learning what we do by working for a general contractor. Um, I, I, I would echo that, uh, but get in, get in with a company uh, that you can grow with and see a lot see a lot of construction. You know, it's a shameless pr plug for pre-construction, but if you can find your way into an estimating department, if you're out in the field, you're seeing one project at a time for a year, a year or more. Uh, if you're in the estimating department, you're seeing five projects a week uh, and learning a whole lot more about construction a whole lot faster. Jason, any uh, or Sean? Uh, oh. I'm Christopher. 
Well, I'll just tag on to that. I mean, uh, Tony and Paul, you know, just to kind of echo what they said, um, there's no right answer to that, right? Uh, college education, any kind of education or advancement is, is critically important. Uh, the construction industry is somewhat unique, though. There is a lot of different facets that, that you can only gain by experience. You know, the, the education will give you the tools. It will teach you how to f uh, finish projects, do time manage management, all, the, all those kind of vital aspects that are crucial to any kind of business. But, you know, we say here at Manhattan, we try to develop five tool players. You have to know first construction assemblies, how buildings go together. You have to know how to schedule proficiently. You have to know cost management. You have to understand the pre-construction process, and then you have to know how to deal with clients. If you want to call it business development or just how the, the general business works. And uh, those are a lot of different functionalities to a construction process that um, the answer is both. You need the, you know, you, you've got to, you've got to have the, the, the education experience as well as the in the field construction experience to develop every one of those facets uh, that you need for the business. And Christopher. Oh, I just wanted to say to that uh, person who's trying to break in to construction management, Houston Community College has a construction management technology program. You can earn certifications um, in, in, you can earn a, an associate's degree, but you can also earn certifications, which, you know, uh, really helps our local general contractors because then you, you've got credentials when you come to them and, and, and show them what you can do. So I, I would highly recommend that. I also know University of Houston uh, within the College of Technology, which is a college where I've taught, uh, also has construction management. So you've got a lot of great uh, uh, opportunities for learning uh, this specific category and, uh, and getting into the game. So just a, just a couple of highlights there for, for that person. A lot of opportunities to learn. And I just wanted to add to that um, for the University of Houston Construction Management uh, Department, you get, actually get a degree, but you, in order to graduate from that pro, it's a four year degree. In order to graduate from the program, you must be placed in internship, paid internships. Great, thank you. Thank you everyone for, for tackling that, that question from every, every angle. Um, gonna go to some non-construction, um, staffing and executive search opportunities. So we'll start with you, Dr. Clark, and then pop to, to Chris and then Sean, in regards to uh, if you could discuss how to handle staffing and executive search opportunities within um, your college and university. I will say for whoever's on the line, you, you missed the opportunity um, for the, I have been repeating, especially if you're in non-construction as well. If you had established a vendor profile um, in our UH database, you would have been notified early. You may have received on the scene from purchasing. Um, we just recently had a, a proposal request for executive search um, or a it, and it may still be open, I'm not sure, or coming up. I, I think it's, I think it may be closed, but it would, it would have been on the ESB day. But we did, we do periodically have that, that, um, that need. So again, it's so important to stress, please establish a profile in the UH Hub database so that I can make certain that you are aware of these opportunities. Yeah. Great. And Christopher, we'll pop that over to you as well. Um, executive search, we, we're in the middle. I can't speak too much of it, about it because we have, we have rules around blackout, but we're in the middle of contracting. We just went through a procurement process. So uh, same thing, register as a, a bidder on the HCC procurement um, website so you can get an opportunity the next time it goes out. And then related to temp agency, we do do some temping uh, and we do a lot of gap filling. Uh, got a request the other day from somebody who needs a person that has experience with uh, running sound, uh, running sound in a meeting um, on a soundboard. So 
uh, instead of having to hire someone like that, we're, we're going to use our temp. And uh, as I had mentioned before, we have local cooperatives that have uh, contracts with um, certified small businesses, and we go to those certified small businesses on a daily basis. So uh, there are opportunities to get on those cooperatives, and uh, HGAC is uh, one of the Houston Galveston uh, area Council is one such cooperative that you can look into and, and possibly get a contract and be able to sell directly to government. So uh, that, that's, that would be my guidance. And Sean, any, any comments and opportunities uh, with UT Health in regards to um, staffing and executive search opportunities? Okay, well, at UT Health, we, uh, we have a... Um, a firm is called in Genesis. They're based out of San Antonio. They're a hub. They're um, Latina owned. And uh, they do bring on outside consultants to the system with the staffing for us, UT Health. Uh, in Genesis, they won the uh, UT System Supply Chain Alliance contract um, several years ago. So they're, 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 pretty, they're pretty well known for us within our system. But if you want to reach out to them, give me a call or zip an email. And I will put you in contact with uh, Dr. Veronica Edwards. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, all of our industry leaders, our panelists, for all, all of your knowledge. And we're going to um, start wrapping things up. Francis with the East End Chamber has some closing thoughts. But once again, just wanted to reiterate that a gold mine of, of information is, is even an understatement of everything that the panelists have shared. And I guarantee you, personally guarantee you, if you take half of, of all of the content today and put it into actions within your company, you will definitely be successful and grow within the government space. These people are dedicated and truly and personally committed to your success. So thank you again for being here today. Thank you for joining us at the East End Chamber. Make sure to become a member. Please complete the survey. Rewatch today's session. It'll be posted eventually on the Chamber's website, the same exact website that you registered, the same website that we already have, the three of the four sessions uh, posted. We referenced a few of them in the chat, particularly the one about bonding and getting your house in order I'm going to repeat it again. I don't know how many times each panelist said, reach out to me, email me, call me. I mean, what an opportunity to establish these relationships and, and, and have people help you through everything. And closing comments are going to turn it back over to Francis with the closing thank you and appreciation to all of our sponsors. Thank you so much, Julie. Thank you so much, Susan, and our amazing panelists. Thank you to our, eight, our title sponsor, HCC Procurement Small Business Development, and especially Veronica Douglas. Thank you to our gold sponsors, uh, Deidre Barrett at Block Companies and Manhattan Construction. We really, really appreciate your support. Um, if you are not a member of the chamber, please reach out to me. My email and phone number are in the chat room or it's on the website. Um, if you were to pay for a workshop series like we had and today's session, it would cost you more than $200. So you do get a good return on your investment here with the East End Chamber of Commerce. I highly recommend that you go to our website, like our Facebook page, LinkedIn page, and let's all stay connected. Um, find out some of our future events like July 8th. We're having a Chamber Connect happy hour at Acadian Coast. On October 6th, we're having our golf tournament. On November 4th, we're having our Port Houston Appreciation Day. So um, make sure that you follow the link in the survey for uh, in the chat room and pick it. Fill out the form now that since we have your uh, captive audience. It, we promise it will not take long. And this will help us get breach your programs and make them even better. So all the father and father figures out there, I want to wish you all a happy Father's Day. Mm -hmm. And thank you again to all of our panelists for being here today. Goodbye, everybody. We're going to stay open for a while so you can get the chat. Make sure that you copy all the good information in the chat room and reach out to us. We're all here to help you succeed. Thanks so much. Be safe, be healthy, and most importantly, take care of each other. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Dr. Clark. <laughs> <laughs>